This is Union Washington. I love being here in the Northwest. Not only the people are really cool, but they got tons of seafood. It's got mussels, it's got salmon, it's got oysters, it's got clams, and all of it right down the dock from my friends. Greg and Linda, they're wonderful people. They have this beautiful little place called Pebble Beach. It's such a magical place. The scenery, the pine trees, the ocean here looks like a lake. This place cannot make me any happier. Yeah. And I can't wait to cook some of this beautiful seafood. My name is Carlos Cham. I was born in La Paz. My grandfather was Chinese, my grandmother Mexican, which makes me three quarters Mexican and a little bit of quarter Chinese. We're going hunting, fishing. I got something to cook and diving. I'm so sorry I know you were taking a nap. And with the help of my friends, I'm going to gather the best ingredients. Put a little dragon's breath in. <laughs> and share an amazing meal with you. Bon appetit. That is going to blow you away. <laughs> so come on, let's go. What's hey, up, buddy? Hey, How are you? Ah, welcome yeah. back to beautiful Hood Canal. Thank you. Thank it's you. Seafood Central. <laughs> what are we going to do today? Are the salmon running? Oh, they are running. And, uh, tides are really high at the moment, so those clams I promised you are going to have to wait till about one in the morning. <laughs> That's OK. Well, why don't we go fishing, and later on tonight, we'll get into those clams. This is one of the forks of the Skokomish River, and it's famous for its Chinook or King salmon, which is what's running right now. Man, it's going to be great. I'm salivating. <laughs> oh my God, they're right there. Wow, that's a big salmon. Yeah, the salmon runs this year have been kind of messed up because of the drought this summer. But we got some good rains recently and the river's running strong again. So having this beautiful river in my backyard makes me believe I should be out here more often. <laughs> this is so different. I'm fishing for salmon on a river. This is awesome. There we go. Oh. Yeah! I got one. Wow! Oh my god, a beautiful rainbow trout. This just made my day. I definitely want to release this. Take the hook out. So, oh. Oh, well, I'm ready to catch another one. Look at this. <laughs> That's my bait. This is some roe from a female salmon, and this is already being cured with borax. So you have this hook right here, and then pull tight like that. You see a little hole over there by this tree trunk. I'm just casting with the current, and I'm hoping that's where the salmon is just sitting there. God, I can see the fish right there. It's right there. That's it, eat it. Oh, I think I got him. I think I got him. Oh, yeah. King salmon on the river. Oh, I'm so stoked. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh, he's getting on the log, though. Uh oh, OK, I don't like that. Oh, this is bad. Oh, oh man, this fishing line does not like structure. I wish I was a bear. <laughs> well, my friend, we fished for a while. We tried a couple of the holes, but I think it's time to go home. Like they say, even a bad day of fishing beats a good day at work. <laughs> I fully agree. <laughs> I am digging for clams in front of Greg's house in the middle of the night. And this is Pebble Beach. And you know what? It should be called Clam Beach, not Pebble Beach. <laughs> it's crazy how many clams are here. The reason why I'm here in the middle of the night, you know, there's four ties every day. Unfortunately, during the day, the tide was not low enough, so we had to wait and come here in the middle of the night because then the tide was a lot lower than it was during the day. This is completely crazy. What kind of clams are we getting right now? Well, we're getting a mix of manilas and butter clams. There's a butter and there's a manila. And we even have some little necks in here as well. The only one we're missing is cockles. This is incredible. I mean, you took the shovel, opened this hole for me, and literally, I took 40 or 50 clams out of this little hole. And I'm not even talking about the oysters, because I am <laughs> surrounded 
here is a cluster of oysters. There's one, <laughs> two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna get the oysters during the day. Right now, I wanna take enough clams to make a beautiful clam chowder. Let's get a half a bucket. Yeah. So let's we can do go it. back and have a couple shot of tequilas. Yeah. <laughs> got three yeah. gallons of clams as it is. Yeah, that'll make clam chowder for all of us. <laughs> I'm gonna be eating good because there's tons of beautiful seafood here. Craig's gonna have a bunch of friends come over. I'm gonna throw a big party. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, time to go home. So we're back in the garage now. Greg, what are you doing, bro? This is a trick that uh, Linda's dad uh, showed us. If you were to try and eat these clams right now, they'd be full of sand and dirt. Overnight, they'll be siphoning and expelling sand and dirt. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put about an eighth of a cup of cornmeal in each bucket is they'll siphon in the cornmeal is like plankton, like their food. And that will speed up the expulsion of the sand, but it also will fill them with cornmeal. <laughs> so tomorrow we'll have clams that are all filled with cornmeal and uh, it makes them taste better. That is one of the coolest tricks I've been taught during my whole entire life. It's time to go and let these little clams go night-night. All right, <laughs> let's go. So we're driving through this spot and I see like tons of pumpkins and these massive radio flyers. This guy had the biggest radio flyers and full of pumpkins. Bill Hunter is 93 years old, still wearing a beautiful cowboy hat, and his family, they got this petting suit. And it makes me really happy because the local schools, they can bring all their kids for a field day to the Hunters. When I was a little kid, stuff like this, I remember forever. Well, these guys are, uh, they're really good at napping. Yeah, they like to sleep. I would probably do the same. I, I would too. <laughs> So, Michelle, what are you doing? Oh, there you go. How old are these guys? Two weeks. Oh, 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 oh. It's like, where are you taking me to? He's a big boy. Are you having fun with Mama? Yeah, are you having fun with Michelle? And these are llamas? Yes. Huh. Well, Bill, thank you so much for showing me this part of your business. Thank you. I want to get some of that sweet corn. OK. To take back to the house and having a little party with some folks. Sounds good. Uh, Have a shopping basket on the way. Well, there's a different variety of peppers here. I was talking to Bill, and he said that these peppers, they're actually very spicy. Beautiful garlic. Look at that. Five beautiful white onions. And these ones remind me of those Maui onions. They're really sweet when you cook them. Shallots, like a half garlic, half onion. So most definitely, we got reds, whites, and rosettes. These ones are the ones I need for my clam chowder. I'm gonna take the ones that are gonna be easier to peel. I don't like peeling a potato that is all uneven. I get so excited. One of my favorite things to eat. I can't help it. I got my basket of beautiful corn, raised by my body Bill here at Hunter's Farms. This stuff right here is gonna be fed to those little animals from the petting zoo. But right now, it's time to pay. Today, we're making clam chowder. We're gonna start making my roux. A roux is when you're gonna cook flour, butter, and milk. At the end of making the clam chowder, this is gonna help it thicken it up. So we have two sticks of butter. The more the butter, the better it is. <laughs> I'm gonna make a really, really big pot. So six tablespoons should be enough for this. Wait until the flour dissolves. This is milk. It's getting really nice and thick. Cook it for about a minute. See the texture? That means you're done. I'm gonna take this to the sink. I'm gonna grab my big old pot and I'm gonna start making the chowder. So I turn this on, olive oil. I'm gonna cook some bacon that I found here. The bacon, when it starts cooking, the fat starts raining, and it makes this beautiful, smoky flavor. I'm so excited. I got three whole onions that I already chopped up, 12 cloves of garlic. You don't want to make chowder just for a few people. You want to make a big bowl of it. That way, you can have chowder for the whole next week. In case it starts raining, you never know. Celery. For each potato, I usually do one stick of celery. Look at that. Beautiful. 
This is fresh bay leaf. Mm. So I found this fresh. We're gonna put them in there. One cup of white wine should do the trick. I have tons of potatoes. I did six potatoes for this. Corn, black pepper, and a little bit of salt. Yesterday, when I cooked the clams and the mussels, I made a beautiful broth. The most important thing about making clam chowder, you gotta make sure you have a really good broth. Some of the cream. Oh, that looks just beautiful. It's been 20 minutes since I started making this. Everything is boiling, it's nice and hot. I have here a little trick. This is hondashi. Hondashi is bonito flavoring. It's a natural smokiness. In Japanese cuisine, you'll find it very, very common. That is excellent. Mm. So this is the time where I wanna add all of my clams, the mussels. We're gonna add the roux little by little. Remember, the roux is what's gonna thicken it up. And this, it's a perfect time to get rid of those bay leaves. And they're floating, so it's making it really easy. I'm so happy. <laughs> One more ingredient, decoration. You only wanna use those clams. They're perfectly close. If they're open, they don't close, discard them. So now, this, it's almost done. I'm just waiting for the clam chowder to thicken up. Keep watching, we have a beautiful party coming. Now it's time to go crabbing. I don't know if I can handle this trip, but I'm sure gonna try it. And hopefully they like dog food, because that's what I put in the pots. Let's go crab for Dungeness. And off we go. Oysters everywhere! <laughs> this is amazing! Today I'm here with my friend Craig at Hood Canal, and I tell you, Greg, I never, never seen so many oysters in my life. There's a type of oyster here called the Hamahama oyster. These are all Pacific oysters, which is the most common oyster found in Hood Canal. It's actually not a native, it comes from Japan. The native oyster to Hood Canal was uh, the Olympia oyster, and they are much, much smaller, and so they're not really commercially harvested. But the Pacific oyster, as you can see, is very happy here. I mean, they are amazing <laughs> in the abundance. I've never seen anything like it. Well, the Hood Canal has got the perfect combination of tides and fresh water, and it's a perfect place for raising oysters. In fact, every beach along Hood Canal looks just like this one. A lot of these will end up in areas restaurants, actually restaurants all around the world. I'm gonna take one of these clusters and I'm gonna put it in the barbecue and I'm gonna have a bouquet of oysters. One thing that I know how to do is open these little oysters. So you wanna break the top shell, and then you wanna drain it, open up the shell a little bit. So as soon as you cut that, it's free. And then you got the little bit of lemon and hot sauce. I guess today, I'll natural. Mm. Mm. My friend, I got plenty. You got a bucket full. I'm gonna barbecue him. I'm gonna eat some in the raw. And those oysters, they're gonna end up in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oysters, clams, mussels. Why don't we go back to the house? Because I'm getting hungry. Oysters. I'm Today, I wanna make a very simple recipe, seven ingredient barbecue sauce for my oyster. Well, my buddy here makes me that beautiful hot sauce. So buddy, take it away. I'm gonna chop some garlics and some shallots. So today we're going to be making uh, dragon's breath hot sauce. But the star of the show is the lemon drops. They're from Peru and they have an intense lemony smell and flavor, but they're also really, really hot. <laughs> so we'll do two handfuls of the lemon drop peppers. You better make sure you wash those hands. I do have a pair of gloves <laughs> here and uh, I was gonna say kids don't try this at home, but okay, I'll put them on. Those peppers are so hot. If we was to touch 
his face, the oil from the pepper gets in your skin, he'll probably end up going to the hospital today. Okay, so now we're gonna go with a uh, liberal amount of the uh, habaneros, some of the less hot habaneros, some of the goat's horn peppers to kind of tame it down a little bit. Nine cloves of garlic, a tablespoon of the coarse salt, and a tablespoon of ginger to put a half a cup of vinegar in. The hardware distillery whiskey. I like that color. Yeah. That's it. Dragon's breath ready to bottle. If you make hot sauces like this and you think it's way too spicy, let it sit in the refrigerator for a week or two. So I want to do a very simple barbecue sauce. So I got my olive oil in there. Garlic, shallots at the same time. I can't have enough garlic. <laughs> this is a Chinese on me, I think. <laughs> and this getting all caramelized. Mm. So now I'm gonna add the white wine. <laughs> but a cup of white wine, it makes the garlic and the shallots like a paste. See, it's nice and soft now. Mm -hmm. And most of the wine already cooked away. Two full cups of tomato sauce. The same amount of barbecue sauce. The one thing that I have left, it's the butter. butter. And the more butter, the, the better. better. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's it, it's very simple. The only thing, that I wanted to do. Put a little dragon's breath in. <laughs> <laughs> number one, yeah. and number two, and I think, <laughs> I don't want to push it. <laughs> and, oh yeah, thank you so much for showing me your salsa. <laughs> we got some friends coming over. We're gonna have a beautiful party. We're gonna have a party. Yay! <laughs> Here I am at the dock with my friend Craig. They have these mussels attached to their dock. The best mussels I ever eaten in my life, they're from this dock right here. I wish I had this much food this close to my house. Probably never leave my house. I'll just stay in and eat all the mussels. <laughs> How you doing over there? I'm getting some big ones, actually. <laughs> I think I'm gonna clean this whole dock up for him. The combination of cold water, high nutrients in the ocean, they're amazing when it comes to mollusk. The colder the water, the better is your seafood always. So, the Pacific Northwest, one of my favorite spots in the world now. <laughs> <laughs> the seagulls is who eats most of the mussels. It's beautiful, look. They're completely white inside, so when I go up to the house, all I have to do is clean that right there, what you call the beard, which is a little bit of grub that they have here in the side. It's like seaweed, but that right there, it's a perfect little muscle. When it comes to food, bigger not always means better. So tomorrow, I'm having a party, and they're gonna invite a few of their friends, and one of the things that I definitely gotta do for that party, I wanna cook some of these mussels on a curry sauce with some of that beautiful sweet corn that I got from Bill today. Sweet corn and some mussels, and that makes a perfect marriage. This is easier than the clamming. Well, it's not as late at night, that's for sure. Oh, that's quite a bucket full already. <laughs> Looks like we'll have a beautiful sunset in a few minutes. <laughs> oh man, the Olympia Mountains. It's such a beautiful evening. I'm gonna hang out here with Greg. I'm gonna keep taking some of these mussels, and you need to come and check out the food I'm gonna make for the party. These mussels are gonna be amazing. The Hardware Distillery. I am going drinking. Good to see you. I am so happy to be Welcome here, Chuck. I have put away lots of booze before. <laughs> Never really asked myself where it came from. Well, let's go tour and show let's... you how we do it. Our whiskey is like a Scottish style whiskey and we're in the process of making some so I can show you the different parts. The first is the bags of malts. We have a little mill downstairs, we grind it up, add hot water and that extracts the sugar. And that sugar water we put in these fermenters here, add our yeast and the yeast to convert the sugar into alcohol. And then at the end, we have what's called spent grain, the leftover grain. And a farmer will come by and pick it up and this is great critter food. Wow. I would love to do something with that. <laughs> That's very good. You can really taste the sugar. The fermentation then goes into this still and comes out with what we call low wines. 
It's the first distillate of a single malt whiskey, and you can smell it. It's really grainy and earthy smelling. Oh, wow. The alcohol is there. Yeah, it's just starting to build up now. The next distillation will be in this alambic pot still. The design actually is a very old Arabic design. They used to make it for essences and perfumes, and then the Spaniards realized you could drink the stuff. When we make our gins, we do the final distillation in this still. And the interesting thing that you would like as a chef is that as the temperature in here rises, spices will come off separately. I can't help myself. Can I have just a tiny bit? So I expected a lot more alcohol. Alcohol, yeah, no, it's alcohol the tails are lower alcohol level. My dad's favorite cologne was a cognac. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a great episode when I'm done in here. <laughs> oh, wow. I know who's going to love this, my camera guy. <laughs> wow. Well, guys, thank you so much. It was wonderful. I'll see you guys tomorrow. OK. Sounds okay. good. Time to go check the pots. I'm really excited. We got a much nicer boat this time, bro. <laughs> I'm going to get those grubs. I don't care what it takes. Maybe going to the market. <laughs> I can song my pirate song. <laughs> arr, arr. Arr, go to out to sea, catching crabbies, crabbies. La, 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 la. So to my surprise, yesterday, we lost one of the pots. The line that was on the float, it broke off. So this pot sat there for a day and a half, and it was able to collect a bunch of Dungeness crap. This is exactly what I'm looking for, and these are males. Unfortunately, they're not big enough. They need to be a lot bigger, like the size from my thumb to my pinky, that wide which is six and a quarter, the pockets are so small that the big crabs can't get in. Unfortunately, we have to release all these guys because they're too small. Right now, I'm just gonna put all these guys back in the water. So hopefully, they get bigger, they get fatter. Bye-bye, little crab. See these beautiful mussels? I'm gonna make those with the curry cream sauce. The first thing that I wanna start with, onions. I'd already put some olive oil in here, lots of ginger and lots of garlic. We always cook our onions and garlic and ginger in the beginning so we can relieve some of those flavors. Our friends at Hunter's Market have these beautiful little peppers. Celery adds a lot of flavor, gives a texture too. Add a little bit of salt and also brown sugar. A half a cup of white wine, green onions, tomatoes. The tomatoes are gonna add a little bit of acidity and also a sweetness to the dish. This is a trick that my father always did. This right here is one chopped apple and one chopped pear. Their natural sweetness from these two, mm, the zest from the lemon, it's a beautiful flavor. Then it's gonna combine perfect with the Thai basil. When I first arrived and my friend Linda said to me, Carlos, these are probably the best mussels you ever had. I was a little doubtful, but as soon as I tried those mussels, I was convinced. Coconut cream is soy sauce. A little bit of that juice from the mussels. I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of curry. These are jalapeno peppers. You cannot make anything hot enough for these guys. They love their peppers. Look at this. No shoulders for mussels here. The only thing you have to do is wait for them to open, and that's it. One more thing to finish, that's putting those beautiful oysters on the barbecue. I'll see you guys in a bit. Hi, guys, welcome. Please come in, have a seat. I think we should start with the mussels, so please take a bowl, somebody. Oh. When I got invited to yes. go to the Northwest, I never thought I was gonna fall in love with the place. It was very unexpected to me. Then we're gonna have some chowder, then we're gonna have some oysters. The people, everybody that came to the party, the quality of their seafood. We blessed in the Northwest. I like how that rhymes. <laughs> And as you know, Dad's gone, but I know that he would be so happy if Carlos had one of his fishing reels, and it's from the 50s. I'm going fishing. The thing that I keep with me the most is definitely the time with my friend Greg and Linda. Thank you so much. They're the most hospitable people you ever meet. I'll make your dad proud. <laughs> as soon as you guys are done, if you're ready to trade those shells for a bowl of chowder, bring it to me. Bring it to me. <laughs> 
very happy to be here in the Northwest. It's been amazing, and I have beautiful oysters and a clam chowder to share with my friends. To the chef! To the chef! <laughs> Until next time, I'm Carlos Cham, and thank you for watching Carlitos Cooking Adventure. Salud!